Good morning. Welcome to the Combo Premium and Public Video Discussion for October 4th, 2016. It's uh, 8 30 a.m. and uh, we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, we've nailed down a couple of factors with Hurricane Matthew. Uh, obviously, it's a very powerful category for hurricane. We know that the Western Atlantic Ridge is going to remain pretty strong, strong enough to get this storm all the way to the Florida coast. And also, we are starting to get a better idea of the timing of this trough and what to expect in that respect. A couple more questions that we have to work out, though, um, that I will break down in this video discussion. Once again, much like yesterday, I am staying away from going from all A, B, and C, and uh, I think that's leading to more confusion than anything else. Let's look at the facts. Let's look at what's happening in the water vapor satellite picture, and from there... I'm going to explain to you what my thoughts are on the evolution of this storm and uh, some of the things we're going to have to work out as we move forward in time. But I think we're getting a better and better idea of what we can expect. And unfortunately for a lot of people on the East Coast, it is not a good story to tell. Uh, not good news in any way, shape, or form, especially for Florida and North Carolina. For our neck of the woods, it doesn't look all that pretty either. But we may dodge a bullet depending on the timing of the cold front. So let's dive into this data. The current observations range from the lower to mid 50s over the northern interior, upper 50s to lower 60s along the coast. We have high pressure building in from the Canadian Maritimes down the coast that's leading to a northeasterly wind around 5 to 15 miles per hour. That wind is going to continue to transport a marine air mass into the region, leading to temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 60s along the coast and upper 60s to lower 70s in the Delaware River Valley for highs. We take a look at the radar here, not much really to speak of. Again, we'll have to watch out for a few isolated showers and a little bit of drizzle here and there throughout the region for today. But overall, no heavy rainfall is expected over the next 24 hours. So let's dive right into the infrared satellite picture. You can see that high pressure system in control, building southward. We'll have variable clouds today, but we'll have clearing as we head towards this evening on through tomorrow. High pressure will remain controlled throughout the rest of the week with very pleasant weather conditions overall. Uh, temperatures averaging slightly to well above normal in some cases, especially the further away you get from the coast, with a rather comfortable air mass in place. So uh, perfect. Let's say if you're going to the Mets game uh, tomorrow night, uh, definitely excellent weather conditions can be expected with the wind coming out from the northeast. So let's dive into Hurricane Matthew. At 8 a.m., it has winds of 145 miles per hour. It has made landfall over extreme eastern, or should I say extreme western uh, Haiti, and it is very, very impressive. Uh, it unfortunately, it's creating a lot of damage, and uh, just a lot of prayers going out to that area. Uh, with some impressive coastal flooding. I've been watching videos. It's just nasty out there. Pressure is at 934 millibars. And the good news is that this hurricane is moving steadily to the north at 9 miles per hour. So although it's obviously making some uh, very dangerous conditions and uh, definitely uh, rough weather conditions, um, it, the good news is that this hurricane is moving at a steady pace to the north at 9 miles per hour. It's currently uh, 10 miles to the east of uh, Taborn 80. And uh, it, the good news when we take a look at the satellite picture is that this hurricane will be moving quickly to the north of Haiti through Cuba and by tomorrow into the Bahamas. So obviously not good news, but at least for portions of Haiti, it, this storm is not going to linger for uh, much longer. So the question is, what happens after this hurricane moves north of Cuba and into the Bahamas? Well, basically what we want to do is take a look at the water vapor satellite picture. So what we're going to do, we're going to break down several factors in the water vapor satellite picture to uh, basically explain to you what I'm expecting with this weather pattern. First and foremost, notice on the water vapor satellite picture, our ridge in the Western Atlantic is building okay is building towards the coast so that means that our hurricane is definitely going to be taking a track through the bahamas in uh, this fashion let's draw it out here 
So this is going to come up through the Bahamas and start taking a turn. And then because of that ridge, now notice, notice here how the moisture here is moving up along the coast. So we basically have our boundary set up as far as where this hurricane is going to be able to track. And so obviously it's taking a track of least resistance, which is basically like this. Now pretty much all the models are showing this evolution. If you're in Florida, on the uh, Atlantic side of Florida, if you're in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, right along the coast, you need to prepare now. You need to uh, learn what your evacuation routes are. You need to make plans. This is a dangerous storm. We're talking about a hurricane moving in very favorable waters in a low shear environment for the most part remaining a major hurricane tracking right along the coast now as it's making this track whether it stays off the coast or not may uh, have some influence as far as the strength of this storm and it's a very large storm remember that the winds exceed out to 185 miles tropical storm force winds so it's not just the actual center of the low that we have to keep an eye on but this whole storm is going to lead to tropical storm force winds and very heavy rainfall all the way up through Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. There's no doubt about that at, that at this point. That part of the forecast is pretty much well agreed on. Okay, so if you're in these locations, central and eastern North Carolina, much of South Carolina, eastern Georgia, much of Florida, you need to prepare now. Okay, don't wait. Do it now. In terms of the northern Atlantic, it becomes a little more tricky. I'm going to throw this out there. One, I do not see this hurricane tracking due north into New Jersey or into Long Island. The reason why is because there's pretty good data uh, now at this point of measuring the speed and the orientation of this trough that's approaching from the west. And that trough will capture this storm on Saturday night. Now, what's going to be interesting on Saturday night is as that's happening, what typically happens with these hurricanes is that, first of all, usually the western side of the hurricanes, because it's pulling in dry air from the land, starts to collapse. So we got that factor. So what that means is that the moisture gradient, the precipitation gradient with this hurricane, as it's lifting northward, is going to be extremely tight. So, for example, in eastern Pennsylvania, you can go from a half an inch, essentially with the cold front, to as much as over three inches of rain over portions of central New Jersey, uh, up through the Hudson River Valley, Connecticut on east. That could definitely happen. What we're going to be dealing with on Saturday afternoon on through Sunday is that this hurricane will be in interacting with this trough and transitioning into what we call an extra tropical low pressure system. How fast that happens is going to be really important because as that's happening in this area right here, we'll circle that, just kind of give you an idea where this evolution will be happening, right around here. Okay, right around in this area here is where we're going to see that evolution of our storm transitioning from pure tropical to extra tropical. Now, the further west this track is, let's say that the track of the low pressure system is right on the coast of North Carolina, the faster this evolution will happen because the center of the storm will be over land while this trough is approaching. So the reason why this is important is because if this transition happens in this area here, the expansion of strong winds will increase. So that's a factor there. As far as the heavy rainfall, the closer you are to the coast, the better chance you see heavier rain. Now, if this trough is a little bit faster, like the European guidance is showing, then a lot of that heavy, intense rainfall, the three plus inch rainfall, will remain over the coastal waters. We'll get about anywhere from a half an inch to an inch and a half of rain out of this, essentially with the cold front. If the cold front's just a tad bit slower, we're talking maybe three to six hours slower then that very intense heavy rainfall with the tropical low pressure system 
uh, will push into the coastal plain, and that's where you'll get your tight gradient going from less than an inch of rain over portions of eastern Pennsylvania to over three inches of rain. Uh, to, in some cases, some model guys put out over six inches of rain uh, in the basically the Delaware River Valley, much of New Jersey, New York City Metro, and Connecticut on up through southern New England. So the timing of that cold front is going to be very important. And the nature in which the storm transitions from tropical to extratropical remains a major question. It will have a major influence on the nature of the precipitation shield and the expansion of winds. In terms of hurricane force winds, the way I see this storm evolving right now and the way that the trough is basically evolving over the Rockies at this point, I don't think that hurricane force winds or a direct landfall into, let's say, Long Island is going to be in the picture. I think by the time this storm gets up to our coastal waters, remember, our coastal waters now at this point are much colder than what we were dealing with just a few weeks ago, and you could think the northeasterly wind pattern that we've been dealing with for the past couple of days and, and almost over a week because that's actually transported a lot colder water down the coastal plain. So we're no longer talking about 80 degree water. We're talking more like in the 50s and 60s, which means that when this tropical low gets up that far north, well, it's actually going to weaken much faster. So that's certainly good news as well. So with all these factors coming together, I, I see more of a, very rough Saturday night into Sunday with the potential for some very heavy rainfall. But obviously the worst impacts are going to be from Florida to North Carolina. The northern mid-Atlantic, I don't see this as a hurricane impact. I see this more as a transition into a major nor'easter that could have the majority of the heaviest rainfall just off the coast. So we'll have to watch this very, very carefully how this evolves. So let's dive into this forecast. So when we're looking at the forecast for this afternoon, high pressures building south, clearing skies from northeast to southwest, highs in the mid 60s along the coast, upper 60s to lower 70s in the Delaware River Valley. For this evening, high pressure continues to take hold on through tomorrow morning. Look for sky cloud cover lows in the lower to mid 50s. Tomorrow afternoon, high pressure pretty much in control with winds from the northeast around 5 miles per hour. Clear skies are expected with highs in the upper 60s to lower 70s. On Thursday, high pressure again sitting right over the region. Again, you can see Hurricane Matthew moving through the Bahamas. You can see that heavy rainfall already starting to spread into portions of Florida. Look for temperatures on Thursday in the lower to mid 50s for lows, mid 70s for highs. On Friday, high pressure again sitting right over the coast. And this pressure gradient here is already going to increase and produce strong winds from North Carolina on south. And then here you have our hurricane that should remain just off the coast of Florida. This again is going to be a question of, of a few miles, whether it tracks right on the coast of Florida or remains over the coastal waters. As this hurricane is approaching, here comes our cold front that uh, potentially will kick this hurricane out into the Atlantic for the northern mid-Atlantic. So on Friday, look for lows in the mid to upper 50s, highs in the mid to upper 70s. Now here's where it gets interesting. On Saturday, that cold front's approaching the region. Here comes our hurricane heading up towards the Carolinas. Now notice that the National Weather Service starts to indicate a transition here from tropical to extratropical. You see the frontal boundaries here that are starting to show up. You can see the cold fronts approaching here. Here's where it gets that transition on Sunday, where it's suggesting that we will transition into an extra tropical low pressure system. How fast this factor, this actually transitions, is going to be very important in determining exactly how the impacts evolve here in terms of the winds, in terms of the heavy rainfall. Now, the National Weather Service tracks this storm basically remaining well southeast of the region. I have some guidance, depending on the timing of this cold front and this trough and the evolution of this storm, that puts the low pressure system more, let's say, in our coastal waters. Again, I don't see any data that is strongly pointing to a landfall over Long Island or southern New England. What I do see is a track basically from the Outer Banks of North Carolina towards, let's say, the benchmark or just east. 
So obviously the further east of that benchmark uh, that we normally see with nor'easters, the less rainfall. If it tracks basically right within the benchmark that we normally see in the winter, we're talking about some very impressive rainfall because you have the factor of the old cold front, that lifting enhancement, the trough, the transition of the trough below, and also plenty of tropical moisture leading to some very heavy rainfall. So it looks like Sunday is going to be a rather nasty day around the region. The question is just how much rainfall and just how windy will it get? Are we talking about winds 10 to 20 miles per hour? Or are we talking about 30 to 45 mile per hour sustained winds with higher gusts? That's pretty much what we're trying to work out right now. Uh, in terms of coastal flooding, uh, wouldn't be surprised to see some minor to moderate coastal flooding. But in terms of coastal flooding, heavy rainfall and hurricane force winds, uh, more of a focus for Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina than really, let's say, Connecticut, New York City Metro, and the New Jersey coast at this time. This all, this whole mess leaves on Monday. So just to backtrack for Saturday, uh, look for lows in the upper 50s to lower 60s, highs in the lower to mid 70s. On Sunday, lows in the upper 50s to lower 60s, highs in the mid to upper 60s. Monday with high pressure building in, clearing skies, a bit breezy, lows in the upper 40s to lower 50s, highs in the lower to mid 60s, which is pretty much where we should be for this time of year. And on Tuesday, high pressure in place, lows in the upper 40s to lower 50s, highs in the mid to upper 60s. So I hope this kind of gives you a good idea of what we're dealing with with this storm for the northern Atlantic. If you have friends, family, or any property from Florida to North Carolina, I would definitely get prepared for this storm now. Don't wait. You know, it's better to be safe than sorry. You know, let's hope that all the models are wrong and this storm just comes out in the Atlantic. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So if you're in Florida, if you're in Georgia, if you're in South Carolina, North Carolina, anywhere in this area right here, I would definitely prepare for a major hurricane impact uh, for basically Thursday and Friday for the northern and Saturday for the northern mid Atlantic looks like Saturday night on through Sunday is going to be rather nasty around here uh, with at the very least periods of heavy rainfall with this cold front approaching the region and moisture being in train northward depending on how fast the storm transitions from tropical to extra tropical over our coastal waters uh, will have a major impact as far as how much how strong the winds will be and also how heavy the rain the further east the storm tracks the more likely we remain below an inch of rain if this storm tracks into our coastal waters there's plenty of support to uh, produce rainfall amounts over three inches of rain in some locations so uh, we still have that to work out and uh, hopefully we will have that all worked out over the next 24 to 48 hours with the latest model guidance Thank you for following NY and JPA Weather, and of course, thank you for being a premium member, and as always, stay safe out there.